Today on City Cash Chicago, Asians have long been ignored, fetishized, or made the butt of the joke in America. We want to put that to rest. That's the tagline for the new podcast, Shoes Off, a Sexy Asians podcast, which drops new episodes every Wednesday. We sit down with the pod's co-hosts, Esther Yoonji Kang and Susie Ahn, and talk about why dissecting and celebrating the Asian experience is so critical. It's Wednesday, February 8th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is What Chicago's Talking About. I still haven't really told my parents what the title of the podcast is. <laughs> you know, I think they know I'm working on a project. and I they talk keep... to famous Asian <laughs> yeah. individuals. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you told them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Susie, Esther, welcome to CityCast Chicago. Thanks, Jacoby. Hi, Jacoby. Thank you. Can you break down the name, right? (laughs) Shoes Off, a sexy (laughs) Asians podcast. First, Shoes Off, what's that? And then why sexy? Yeah, I mean, you know, to be honest, it started off with the sexy. Um, That was was (laughs) Esther's great idea to, uh, you know, we wanted to talk to sexy Asians Um, And part of that is to kind of like reclaim that word sexy for Asians Um, as as Asian women. uh, Both of us have been fetishized just in our daily lives. But you you look at um, pop culture, Asian women have been fetishized, Asian men, um, you know, kind of ignored or made the nerdy sidekick. So we wanted to reclaim that word. Mm. Uh, But then you run into some issues on Google when you, you know, look up sexy Asians. So um, we had to we had to tinker around a little bit, um, and and so we went with shoes off, um, not as something to just tack on to that title, but um, that is culturally meaningful for us as Asians. Most mm. Asian cultures, you take your shoes off when you come inside, um, but we also hope that that you know invokes this feeling of comfort, you know, sitting down with friends for a chat, and so that's how we came up with Shoes Off, a Sexy Asians podcast. I love the practicality of the title, but also the the deep layers in it. Can you tell me some of the guests that are going to be in your lineup? And, and how did you determine what it means to be, like what a sexy Asian is? I imagine that's not just your your physical appearance or how, how society sort of, you know, oogles at you. Yeah, for sure. There are so many sexy Asians. And what we did is we made this huge master list and it really ran the gamut from, you know, actors, singers to comedians to fashion icons, et cetera, et cetera. Just the list was so long and exhaustive. And again, you know, what we wanted to do is sort of redefine the word sexy. It's not just about being physically hot, but being extremely talented being confident, being hilarious. These are all things that, you know, I usually just call my friends, you sexy beast or whatever, just because they're, <laughs> they're, they're great. They're awesome. Right. And so that was the idea. And so we have some incredible folks, including, you know, the first episode was Joel Kim Booster. He's a comedian and actor just kind of everywhere these days. Um, we talked to Domi Shi today uh, in the second episode. She's an animator of uh, VP at Pixar. She created the movie Turning Red. Um, and we also talked to Lisa Ling, the incredible journalist who's just been around for decades and she's amazing. We spoke to Samir Gadia, who is so hot. Oh my gosh, he's really hot. But he's also very talented and he is the frontman for the band Young the Giant an indie band where you expect the lead singer often to be a white man. And he's this Indian guy who, again, is very (laughs) hot. Susie, when you all were developing this, it it sounds like it was not only obviously personal to both of you, but when you were thinking about, you know, the larger diaspora, who who were you hoping to make this podcast for? Yeah, I mean, so first and foremost, we wanted to make it a podcast for for all Asians, and and that is just sort of the pan Asian experience. Um, you often hear Asians are not a monolith, and that is true. And we want it to be as inclusive as possible um, in, in terms of the Asian experience. 
Um, you know, whether that, we, I mean, Esther and I were both Korean American, um, but we did not want it to be limited to just East Asians. So we're, we're talking to, um, South Asians, Indians, um, as well as, uh, Chinese, Japanese. We try to, um, make it as inclusive as possible. And for, uh, listeners, you know, of course, people who, um, are Asian American, maybe they'll relate, but we wanted it to be for everyone, an experience for everyone to come in um, and find things relatable to them, if even if they don't have the Asian American experience, um, but also maybe learn something and have fun along the way. When you talk about inclusivity, do you guys approach that? Like, are is it your goal to also, like you said, show people that you know Asians are not a monolith to sort of give some of that history, break down you know how many different countries and groups of people make up this uh, identity. Yeah, for sure. You know, even just among the the three of us who work on this podcast, Susie, myself, and our producer Stephanie Kim, we all re- shout out Stephanie. We we all three of us have such different backgrounds. Like we grew up all over the U.S. Um, I grew up, you know, in South America as well, and so like it's just such a huge diaspora. There's so many different uh, lived experiences, but there's also the commonality of being. Asian in America and everything that comes along with that, right? Because like when someone looks at look, looks at us, whether you're, you know, South Asian, whether you're a uh, Pacific Islander, whether you are East Asian, we all, you know, sometimes what people see is you are a foreigner, you do not belong. And so we look at the differences and we kind of show, man, there is no one way to be Asian American or Asian But there are commonalities that we all share. Have y'all seen these egg prices? Yeah, I'm talking about $7 a carton. And then we got rising rents on top of that. It's just, it's just too much. It makes you wonder if you're better off trying to buy a home or at least getting your questions answered. Before I heard the How to Buy a Home podcast, I didn't even know what questions I should be asking. And host David Sedoni can get you the answers. Like, yes, your monthly mortgage might be cheaper than rent. Or no, you probably don't need to put 20% down. You can ask David those questions directly at howtobuyahome.com. Take advantage of this free resource and start listening to the How to Buy a Home podcast wherever you listen. Visit howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year you rent. Were there any personal moments from your life as you were developing this, right? As, as an Asian woman, where you, you really made you think that this podcast was was needed? Like when, when you all were, were coming up with this, what, what were some of those moments that came oh, up for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, just making this podcast, I think back to um, uh, growing up. I grew up in Alabama and just felt like I was... Always, I always felt othered, you know, that I didn't belong, even though uh, I was born in the the states and and grew up in Alabama, um, that I didn't belong. And and if I had a podcast like that, this, it would just feel so much better. Another thing that came up, I mean, just even with our our title, like, um, it, you know, I, I get a little, <laughs> I get a little PTSD when I hear sexy Asians sometimes, just because in high school, and I talk about this in the podcast, in high school, um, there was like a construction nearby, a construction worker nearby our school who like kept trying to ask me out, leaving notes on my car dressed as sexy Asian baby. Um, and that was in the oh school parking lot. That's just sort of like, ooh, I'm sorry. I, I, you do not know me. And it's all just based off fetish. And it's just sort of like, you know what? We want to take this podcast and show that uh, you know, you can't flatten our identity and you can't just say, oh, uh, I, I, I'm into Asian girls because all Asian girls are like this. I appreciate you saying, sharing, Susie. Esther, have there been any specific interviews or moments that you've already done that have really stuck with you and already started to validate you all's choice to, to go in on this? Oh, my gosh. Every guest has has illuminated 
some amazing truth um, to us, and we've learned so much from from everyone. Yeah, I mean, like even the uh, the guest today, Domi, she um, <laughs> something that came up that I just thought was uh, a funny, common thing that that um, I've learned that you know is is somewhat common among um, children of immigrants is just sort of like being a different self in front of your parents versus your friends and different things that you're doing to uh, get your parents approval. I don't know. There's just something about being an immigrant kid, man. I think it's like we have that very specific relationship with our parents where Mm -hmm. I think like we just know that they sacrifice so Mm -hmm. much and we um, we we love them so much and we want them to be proud of us. So I think that's what adds to the like not wanting to show them an F on your report right. card or like that you got into trouble. And just the, as an immigrant kid, like uh, you worry about your parents. I mean, I, I worried about my parents a lot and I worried about their struggle. And so, of course, I wanted to spare them of any drama that I was experiencing at school. Right. So like they had no idea what I was doing at school. I just acted like I was very good and obedient Because I wanted to make sure that they weren't worried when they had so many other things to worry about. I think that's very unique to the immigrant experience as well. Esther, for people who, you know, come to the title of a podcast and, you know, we're we're thinking about this every day over here at City Cash Chicago. How do we bring people in? How do we reel people in, you know, who might not. That neighborhood might not be about them, yeah. right? That that political issue might not be at the top of their list, right? People see the title, Shoes Off, a Sexy <laughs> Asians podcast. Whether they are, you know, a part of the Asian diaspora or not, why should they click on and, and follow along with you all's journey? I mean, why do you care about anybody? Why do you watch any any film? Or it's I think it's to expand your mind, to expand your understanding about humanity. I think that's really important. Um, just And also, it's fun. I hope it's fun. Like, Susie and I have fun. Stephanie, Susie and I all have fun together. The guests seem to be having a good time. Uh, and so, I don't know. I, I think uh, the way I look at it is, when I listen to a podcast, I, I, I appreciate my investigative journalism, hard-hitting stuff. But man, sometimes I need a break. You know, and so I hope that that will it'll be an oasis for some people. Um, and also, Jacoby, you need to trademark that that theme song you just you just made for us, or maybe we have to work on that. I don't know, but we love it. Oh, yeah, we maybe we owe you yeah. some royalties or something. Y- y- y'all the homies, y'all y- y'all can have them. That's, we just cranking these out over here. <laughs> I want to give a huge city cast thank you to Esther Yoonji Kang and Suzy An, the host of Shoes Off, a Sexy Asians podcast. Thank you for stopping by City Cast. Thanks, Jacoby. Thank you. Before I let you go, a little bit of news, y'all. The Illinois Gaming Board is expected to move Medina Temple and River North one step closer to a temporary casino. Remember, Bally's officials said they want the temp site running by this summer, despite ongoing criticism from area alders and neighbors. Dozens of Walter Payton memorabilia personally owned by Sweetness himself is being auctioned off. You can bid at the link in the show notes on jerseys, game balls, and even awards. When the podcast wraps, head over to our daily newsletter, Hey Chicago, to learn about some of the big endorsements and donors in our mayor's race. And some good news to get you through. Every Friday in February, the new Healthy Lifestyle Hub on 79th Street in Gresham is hosting a Black History Month small business fair. Grab yourself some cool homemade gifts, a Valentine's Day surprise, and even some for your sweet tooth. As always, we appreciate you for listening. Tomorrow, join us as we break down the Chicago classic, Love Jones. I'll talk to you then. Peace. Shoes off. <laughs> Oh. Sexy Asians podcast. Well, let me tell you, we've been I, I've been singing that all weekend. <laughs> all weekend I've been singing it, yeah. I'm glad.